Hey guys, Keith Angle for TGI Sports Talk with my weekly vlog. We'll try to keep it short. It might go a little bit longer today as I've got a topic that's just always weighs on my mind this time of year. So we've got the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame vote coming up. The ballot's been released. We've got the NFL vote will come up uh, around Super Bowl time here in another couple months. Um, it, it, it's gotten to be the Hall of Great, right? The Hall of Very Good, I should say. It should be the Hall of the Best. Great, if you will. All-time great is even better. So first time people on the ballot this year, Carlos Beltran. I, I mean, look, a great player. 435 home runs, 312 stolen bases, three gold gloves, nine all-star teams. You know, by historical comparisons, you want to compare him to Duke, uh, to, um, you know, Duke Snyder or Gil Hodges? Well, he belongs in, but is that good enough? I'm going to say Carlos is borderline. Sorry. K-Rod, Francisco uh, Rodriguez, 437 saves. He's fourth all-time behind Mo Rivera, Hoffman, and Lee Smith, all in the Hall of Fame. You know, I just don't know because these relief stats, these save stats are so blown out of proportion these days. Relievers are asked to do so little in my mind. Uh, uh, K-Rod is, again, borderline in my mind. We've got some leftovers who uh, who are, are trying to get in, and uh, Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland is a great player at a position that doesn't have a ton of uh, of Hall of Fame representation, third base. You know, you want to consider Scott Rowland, I don't have a problem. Great defensive player, one of the great defensive third basemen of his time, for sure, and maybe all time. And he's gained from uh, his first time on a ballot, 10% of the vote, to 63 uh, next year, or last year, I should say. He's closing in on a 75% uh, threshold. Probably needs, I don't know, 12 more votes. I'm going to put Scott Rowland in fine, but I want to see guys like Greg Nettles in a Hall of Fame if you're going to put uh, Scott Rowland in. Because this isn't just about players that have been put in that I don't think are deserving. I mean, look at last year's ballot alone. Gil Hodges, Tony Oliva, Jim Cott. Ted Simmons, all fine players. Man, are they Hall of Fame worthy? Are they better than Thurman Munson? Was Ted Simmons better than Thurman Munson at his peak? Now, I know he didn't play as long because he was tragically killed in a plane accident. Right? If Gil Hodges and Kirby Puckett are in the Hall of Fame, how can Don Mattingly not be in the Hall of Fame? Interesting enough, Bonds, Clemens, Schilling all fell off the ballot last year. Will they ever get in? Again, you know my my position on this from, from previous vlogs. If you're going to have a Hall of Fame, how are you keeping Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens? Forget about Schilling. Pete Rose. How are you keeping these guys out of the Hall of Fame? You should put them in there and tell the story of warts and all. More great players not in, not in. Uh, we, um, Todd Helton, wh- Bobby Wagner, all guys that were good good players. Helton's had a great career, but he played his cr- career, and again, that's this isn't his fault. He played his career in in Colorado, where he got an advantage. He hit three sixteen lifetime. He only hit three hundred sixty nine home runs. Joe DiMaggio got in with that number. He's been trending up pretty much every year. Last year, I think they got, Helen got 52, Wagner 51. I don't think either one of them belong in the Hall of Fame. I really don't. A-Rod, I look at, as much as I despise A-Rod, given my previous arguments about Bonds and, and uh, Clemens and others, I don't know how you keep them out. He likely will be kept out, though. 
some other first timers on the, on the ballot: Jacoby Ellsbury, Andre Ethier, J.J. Hardy, Mike Napoli, Johnny Peralta, <laughs> Jason Worth, Branson Arayo, uh, Matt Cain, R.A. Dickey, John Lackey, Houston Street, Jared Weaver, all either very good or okay ball players. None of them deserve Hall of Fame consideration. I wouldn't be shocked to see all of them fall off the ballot after the first year. But, you know, we talk about guys that are in and guys that belong in. Let's look at some of the guys put in the Hall of Fame here in the last, I don't know, let's go back 10 years or so. 2022, as I mentioned, I don't know enough about Bud Fowler to really make a comment. Gil Hodges, Jim Cott, Minnie Minosa played over five decades. Now, he was an inf influential uh, player because I believe he's the first player of Cuban descent to make the major league. So just on that merit, I'll give Minnie Minosa the benefit of the doubt. David Ortiz, great player. Juiced up. You're going to leave Bonds out? You're going to put <laughs> you're going to put Ortiz in? Please. All or none, guys. 2021 none. This is one thing I like about baseball. No guaranteed people have to be in. In football, you've got to get at least, again, the number I think is six. But if nobody gets 75% of the vote, you don't get in. 2020. I think the class just got celebrated last year because of uh, of uh, COVID. Uh, the inductees that year, Derek Jeter, no-brainer, sorry. Not just because I'm a Yankee fan, no-brainer. Marvin Miller, yes, very influential in, in, hall, in, uh, in baseball history. Ted Simmons, borderline. Again, if Ted Simmons is in, how are guys like Thurman Munson not being considered? His prime may have been shorter, but, man, he was good. He was as good as 10 seconds or better in his prime. Larry Walker, uh, you know, I just don't know. Another very fine player. Hall of Fame worthy? Don't know. Harold Baines? No. Roy Holiday? I'm going to say yes, only because of the lowered expectations uh, for starting pitchers these days. I should say from compiling type numbers. They're – as good, but they're not going to get as many wins. CC Sabathia got to 250. He might be the last guy ever to get there. Edgar Martinez, I'm going to say yes. I know the argument was he's a DH, but he was a great DH. And he only DH because he got hurt. And this man was clutch. I'm going to give Edgar Martinez a pass here. Mariana Rivera, unanimous vote, absolutely. Mike Yusina, Again, fine player. Won 20 games only once in his career on the Yankee team uh, his last year. Was he, He's never even the best pitcher on his team. And Lee Smith, again, another borderline guy. It's always hard to judge relief pitchers. Chipper Jones, no argument. Vlad Guerrero, Jim Tomei, Trevor Hoffman, I would say belongs. Jack Morris, look at compiler pitched a long long time belongs in the hall of fame maybe Alan trammell another borderline case jeff bagwell yes tim raines okay i rod yes sure holds for his contribute uh, uh, contributions to the game yes bud Selig. Mm. mike piazza yes ken griffey jr yes Craig Biggio, yes. Randy Johnson, yes. Pedro, yes. John Smoltz, yes. Maybe two Hall of Fame-worthy uh, careers. Similar to Dennis Eckersley. One career as a starter, one career as a closer. Bobby Cox, absolutely. Tom Glavin, you know, again, Greg Maddox, yes. Tom Glavin, I guess if I'm taking Maddox, I got to take Glavin. Tony La Russa, absolutely Hall of Famer. Frank Thomas, absolutely. Joe Torre, for his managerial career, and he was a pretty good ball player, not a Hall of Fame ball player, but when I put them both together, yes.
that's enough for now. Ron Santo, mm, Barry Larkin, mm. Burp Lilevin always was a test case for, for guys getting in. Didn't win 300 because it used to be 300 games. You're in. He finished with like 287 wins, but at the time he retired, he was like third on the all-time strikeout list. How about some guys that aren't in that belong in? I've mentioned a couple already that are near and dear to my heart. Don Banningley. How could he not be in the Hall of Fame? Kirby Puckett. Look at Kirby Puckett's and Don Manley's numbers. Compare them one day. Kirby Puck's in the Hall of Fame. Don Manley's got to be in the Hall of Fame. If Gil Hodges is in the Hall of Fame, Don Manley has to be in the Hall of Fame. It just does. Who are some other players? Not in. And you will we'll decide if they belong in. Because, again, when it comes to the free or free agent, I'm sorry, the steroid era, I have to be careful. I say put guys in and tell the whole story. But if I feel you're just a creation of the steroids, then no. Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Hall of Famers before they ever started doping. Best players by position, not in the Hall of Fame. Bill Freehand. Bill Freehand was a great defensive player. Some people say it's a toss-up between him and Munson. Munson's a much more deserving candidate at catcher than Freehand. Freehand's a great player. I'm not taking anything away from these players. Gene Tennis, no. Rafael Pamero, an interesting case. So, goes along the lines of what I just brought up. I think he's basically a creation of steroids. Was a fine player before there. Was he getting to 3,000 hits and 500 home runs without steroids? Unlikely. Lou Whitaker, never been a fan of this. I would say Jeff Kent more uh, worthy than uh, than Luke Whitaker if we're going to talk about second baseman. One of the great omissions ever, and they list him here at third base, Dick Allen. Dick Allen played first base, third base. Played the outfield. Dick Allen was a misunderstood individual in his day, not terribly friendly with the press, had his troubles in Philadelphia with the fans. Was thought of as something of a malcontent, but he might have just been before his time. It was the times he played in that really made it hard for Dick Allen. Dick Allen's a great, great player. Go back and look at Dick Allen's numbers year over year, and you will see one great player, Dick Allen, probably today, the biggest omission, not in the Hall of Fame. And again, at first base, I'm getting madly, not uh, Palmero. Sorry. Shortstop A Rod, he's likely to get in. I, look, at, I, I guess what I shouldn't say that he's unlikely to get in. But given my other arguments about Bonds and Clemens, then A Rod's got to be in. Um, some other notable infielders, Jimmy Rollins, Omar Vasquez, Omar, Miguel Tata, Jim Fregosi, all knows. No, 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 no. Stop arguing for these guys. The outfield bonds we already talked about. Definitely accrued a Hall of Fame a career before he started doping. Put him in. Tell the story as ugly as you want to make it. Kenny Lofton. He played for 11 teams, but that, that doesn't help him. Kenny And Kenny Lofton was a good player for a pretty good period of time. He was a stolen base threat through most of his career. His, he, he, he probably hung on too long, which hurts some of these guys. But I'm not putting him in the Hall of Fame. Andrew Jones, maybe. Jim Edmonds, no. Dale Murphy, back-to-back -back MVP, hard to ignore, but overall his career was, you know, not pulsing. Jimmy Wynn, Great player. In today's era, Jimmy Wynn would have been a Hall of Famer, probably. But the way the game was played, the pitching dominated, higher pitching mounds, bigger ballparks. Shoeless Joe Jackson definitely belongs in the Hall of Fame. He's kept out for one incident where it's debatable whether he participated or didn't or even knew what the hell he was doing because he was not the brightest guy ever to play in the major leagues. Hal McCray. I would argue, if we're going to put our Edgar Martinez in as a DH, 
and Hal McCray should really be in there. 338 home runs, ton of seasons over 300, 100 RBIs, doubles machine some years, needs to be in. Pitchers, Roger Clemens, we've already touched on. No way you keep him out. Other guys, Kurt Schilling, no. Tim Lincecum, no. Louis Tian, I would put in the Hall of Fame. Two different careers. Hurt his arm. He was great with the Twins. And the Indians early in his career, I guess with the Indians first. I interviewed him, I should know. The Indians first, the Twins, hurt his arm, came back, resurrected his career with the Red Sox. Probably hung on a little too long, playing with the Yankees and the Angels and the Pirates, but definitely gets in. Kevin Brown, no. Dave Steve, no. Dave Cohn, no. Oral Hersheiser, no. Roy Oswalt, no. Johan Santana, not good enough. Good, 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 good pitcher. Not Hall of Fame worthy. Andy Pettit, no. Mark Burley, no. Ron Guidry, I love. No. Tommy John, maybe, because, again, you're talking about a guy who changed the game. He didn't do the operation, but he was operated on. Tommy, he's got a surgery named after him. I would possibly make him a Hall of Famer. Mickey Lowell is an interesting case. Uh, some of the, a couple of the great seasons in baseball history, but overall, not the cumulative numbers Hall of Famers like to see. Dan Quisenberry, relief pitchers are very tough for me. Mo Rivera is a no brainer. Goose Gossage, a no brainer. But some of these other guys, Joe Nathan, Papelbon, Folk, Gordon, Henke, all up and down careers. Kent Tacolvi, John Wetland got other problems outside of baseball. No. Billy Wagner, no. Sparky Lyle. Again, all of these guys had up and down seasons. That's the thing of relief pitchers, up and down, right and left. <laughs> no pun intended. So you got a whole bunch of guys, some deserving, some not. The fact is, is the Hall of Fame watered down? And at the same time, we leave worthy candidates out? Does the process need to change? The NFL, where I said they let they have to get six guys in, at least their, their criteria is higher. You have to get 80% of the vote. And then they have cut down periods, right? There's I think there's a list that's first released, then they get down to the 25 or 28 semifinalists that they have now, then they're going to get down to some finalists before they finally vote Super Bowl weekend, I think. And the NBA uh, Hall of Fame, I won't even get into. But to me, at the end of the day, I want a Hall of the best. Not very good. And all the players I mentioned, I don't mean to disparage any of them that they don't belong in the Hall of Fame. By saying they don't belong in Hall of Fame, they're great players. But I want to see just the best. What are your thoughts? Do you agree, disagree on any of this? You got your own candidates? I'll shoot them down. To me, I want to see no-brainers like Ken Griffey Jr., Barry Bonds, Mickey Mantle, Derek Jeter, Mo Rivera. Give me your thoughts, guys. And by the way, the pinnacles change. 500 home runs used to get you in. Will it anymore? Because home runs are not at a premium in the way that they were. Well, for TGI Sports Talk, give me your feedback. Tell me I'm crazy. Tell me you agree. Tell me anything. Just say something and like and share this with your friends. And go to TGI Sports Talk and like and share and follow the show. All right, have a great, great, great week.